Welcome back to another video where I answer your questions of the universe, mostly pertaining to IBS, SIBO, and the microbiome, admittedly, but questions about the universe nonetheless, right? In today's video, we're going to be answering the question, does SIBO cause malabsorption? And if so, what the heck do you do about it? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! But before I can answer the question on this board, I need to introduce you to the three mals. And this is going to be from my most recent video that I posted a couple days ago. So in that video, I talked about the three mals, which are malnutrition, as I have chosen to define that term, maldigestion, and finally malabsorption. Now, the third mal is the reason why you're watching this video, right? You have SIBO or you think you have SIBO and you have come to believe that you might have malabsorption because of it. But I am here to tell you that that is actually not true for the vast, vast, vast majority of you. I'm talking like 99.9% .9 of you. And why that is, there's a recent video that I did, two videos back, where I covered this. I think I, I, I titled it something like, do you have fake SIBO or something really controversial and clickbaity. But in that video, I talk about how SIBO, as it was defined back in the day, is very, very, very radically different than what we now label as SIBO in modern day. So if you were diagnosed with SIBO back in the 70s, 80s, 90s, or early 2000s, that was a completely different clinical entity, and it should have a completely different name in the one paper they said SIBO syndrome versus the people who get a breath test or an aspirate in this day and age with current criteria. And the reason for this is that they have slowly lowered the bar, especially in the last 10 years or so, we have lowered the bar to a point where a lot of completely asymptomatic healthy people are now fitting the criteria for what we're currently calling SIBO. And we get into a lot of squirreliness where treating the SIBO doesn't actually lead to symptom resolution in this group of people. Antibiotics don't necessarily always help these people. And we have this weird world where SIBO has developed this, this, uh, this, I want to say rumor and it's not rumor, reputation. There we go. SIBO has developed this reputation for being incredibly hard to treat when that's actually not the case. SIBO in and of itself back in the day was hard to treat because there was some overt underlying pathology causing it, like short bowel syndrome, and it was very, very severe. These are the people who honestly would have malabsorption, and this is the basis of the research that tells us that SIBO can cause villus atrophy and malabsorption. That was in this group of people, and they are in no way, shape, or form similar to the people who are diagnosed with SIBO in this current day and age. Now, now, if I haven't lost you yet, I will share this little golden nugget towards the end of the video here. And that is, remember, 99.99% of you watching this video now do not have to worry about malabsorption. You don't have it. You were lied to. However, 99% of you probably have some degree of inadequate nutritional intake. I guarantee you there's at least one nutrient, one vitamin or mineral or fiber or macro that you are under consuming and it is directly leading to some of your symptoms or adverse effects that you're experiencing. And I know this because I do nutritional tracking with my patients. I do this for a living and I do this on myself too. And I'm continually surprised to see the number of people with constipation who come to see me and they're simply not eating enough fiber. Or the people with iron deficiency who were told that they have malabsorption and it's the SIBO and yada yada. And they actually just don't eat enough iron. It's really simple, guys. And there's a free app called Chronometer. You could use that to track your nutrition for at least a few days and get a sense of what you're eating and where you're landing with some of these nu nutrients. It's so easy to do. You don't even need a professional like me. You don't have to pay the big bucks to do counseling with me. You can just download Chronometer, check on it, put your money where your mouth is. See if you are eating as wonderful of a diet as you hypothesize you might be. And if not, you can change. With knowledge comes power. So like I said, 99% of you don't have to worry about this, but you do need to worry about this. And similarly, I would wager a bet that about 50% of you need to think about maldigestion and do something simple like a betaine HCL challenge test to see if you feel better with a bit more stomach acid, or maybe try some digestive enzymes or improve your bile flow. These are the things that will remedy this maldigestion piece. And again, it seems like about a 50-50 shot that people with IBS or SIBO have some degree of this going on. I shared in my last video, there was a guy in FODMAP Freedom that comes to mind in the spring, 
And I have all my students do the prokinetic speed dating. I ship them samples to try. And I also have my students try HCL, uh, the HCL challenge. And I send them the capsules to try out for that. Well, when he supplemented with betaine HCL, his IBSD, his chronic diarrhea, totally went away. He had perfect, wonderful poops just from betaine HCL. And we could hypothesize that that might have impacted his ability to digest things like protein, iron, B12, magnesium, uh, calcium, all the things that we know we need stomach acid to digest, but it was also contributing to his further down the line symptoms of diarrhea and bloating. So again, don't underestimate this one, but if you had to pick one takeaway from this video, it's the nutrition tracking and just see if your diet stacks up the way you think it does you might be really surprised to see that you are under consuming a lot of key nutrients that you were blaming on malabsorption when it was actually just malnutrition. Of course, I know what you might be thinking right now. You're like, yeah, cool lady, that sounds real rad. I know my nutrition needs some work, but I can't introduce foods because they make me feel bad. So what the heck am I supposed to do? I'm stuck, this video was worthless, I hate her so much. Well, I've got good news for you, assuming you don't hate me, because if you hate me, then I've got nothing for you. But if you're feeling stuck and you feel like you can't introduce these foods because they cause you unwanted symptoms and you don't know what to do and you're scrambling and trying to piece it together, FODMAP Freedom, my group coaching course that got its cutesy name because I help people successfully reintroduce foods, that group coaching program is enrolling again in August of this year. So come join us. You know that meme that's like, come to the dark side, we have cookies. My version of that is come to FODMAP Freedom, we have garlic and avocado and apples and all of the foods that you miss. So let me help you. I will help you understand the malnutrition thing and fill in the holes of your diet safely and without unwanted symptoms. I will help you understand and test out if you have maldigestion because I send you the prokinetic speed dating and the HCL and the bile enz and the enzymes and the things that you need to try this out. That way you're not spending a damn fortune on 12 different bottles of supplements, none of which help you. This is why I made FODMAP Freedom. It's such a cool journey. I love seeing the transformations. We had so many people this time around in the spring who came in with such profound symptoms and they are 100% completely cured and better. Some of them are eating gluten again, you guys. Gluten, the devil molecule. They're eating it in moderation and loving life and you can too if you just come over to the dark side and have the garlic with us. So I hope you'll consider it. FODMAP Freedom, the link is down below. If you go, the, the URL is fodmapfreedom.com slash enroll. So go check that out. Join us, I would love to see you. We do live Q and A's. I do my live Q and A all afternoon on Friday, every single week when we're enrolling. And my FODMAP Freedom coach, who's a nutritionist, does two other live Q and A's throughout the week when we're in season. And I can't wait to see you on those live Q and A's and hear about your wins. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.